All right, David Harry again with one of my preliminary microphone tests. And before I kick into this, if anyone needs an explanation as to what I mean by a preliminary test of any description, there's going to be a link here and in the descriptions below and also at the end of the video where, you, well, it'll take you to a video which explains what I mean by a preliminary test. Also, there'll be links as well to a playlist for a lot of my prelim tests that are put active. Anyway, so what it is, in this prelim test, I've, uh, I, I got up this morning actually and um, I was like checking through some stuff because I needed to try and work out another microphone uh, for doing some close VO stuff with indoors. And I was going through a bunch of videos and then I'd realized I still had hold of a mic that I'd not revisited and in fact, didn't even put up properly the original prelim videos for, and it's this one, which is the RV4 by Red5 Audio. Now, what I'm going to do is if I can find the original masters, I'll reload them up and probably put them live because I thought they were interesting at the time. Um, if not, I'll just link them uh, to what was my old test channel. And then obviously this one's going up and between these prelim videos for this microphone, it's going to lead me to one or two maybe, or maybe just one condensed video to show the use of this mic in certain situations. Now, just a brief description about the microphone. It is a cardioid condenser type microphone and it's also like, you know, a traditional pencil styled one and it can be self-powered or it can be powered by phantom power. Now, right now I've got it self-powered with just a small AA battery inside. But the interesting thing here is I'm going wireless with the Rode Wireless Go. So I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to see it, but there's the transmitter pack there just clipped to me pocket so what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit in this particular configuration but then what it is I've just bought one of these don't know if we can get a don't know if we'll get focus on that properly hold on now what that is it's basically a solid block a converter which goes from XLR to 3.5 mil so what this is going to allow me to do is to connect it to the mic and then connect the mic direct to the transmitter off the wireless go um, so this particular setup we've got right now you know it may not be for a lot of people having the cable showing like that me personally I'll just use whatever is to hand to get the job done but I appreciate you know some people don't really like to have cables on show and stuff like that which is why I'm going to flip over to the other configuration shortly okay so basically we um, off my previous prelims for this microphone, what had worked out was that it's actually a very good microphone for its price, and I'll get to that in a second, but it is not overly sensitive, or at least it doesn't have a very loud output. Now, the thing with that, it actually makes it extremely useful for certain things. Oh, by the way, yeah, I didn't mention, I've got the dead cat off a Rode video micro on it, which is absolutely necessary, because although this microphone isn't necessarily a loud one, Due to the type of cardioid pattern it's got and the type of capsule that it uses, it is very subject to plosives and whatnot. So the idea is to like revisit it again because of its price and because I think it may be a very useful option for a lot of people for dialogue. Now what it is, this is traditionally probably going to be used for say instrument work, all kinds of instrument studio stuff, but there's no reason why you can't use what would be touted as an instrument mic with dialogue if it works. So the whole point is to try and see if it all works, hence this other test that I'm doing right now, only because if this does work out really well, it's an extremely cheap option to go wireless with a handheld condenser, a cardioid type with the Rode Wireless Go. Okay, so what it is, it, it, I can still feel the rain here because what had happened, I'd gone into the park to do the test and it started raining as soon as I got there. So I've had to come to this other place that I sometimes come to because there's more tree cover. But I still have to be careful not to get rain all in my camera and stuff like that. Plus also where I am here, it's right by a very busy main road, which, um, you know, you might have heard these if you've seen, you know, other videos of mine or other prelims. Usually I'll come here specifically to stress test a mic because of the noise off the, off the road, off the cars and that. But in this instance, it's not particularly for stressing it in that, you know, in this environment, it's just, 
I'm here, so it's going to have to get stressed, basically. So bear that in mind, because I think this is going to be rejecting the traffic a lot as well. Okay, so I think I've like done a, enough blurb here in this configuration. So let me just switch over to the secondary configuration. Okay, so I've now switched over to the second configuration, which is to use the Wireless Go connected directly to the RV4 via that little adapter block that i just shown before. So I'll try and, try and show you it here if the camera will get in focus. Let's see. So hopefully what we should see there is at the base of the microphone, I've got that block on and then that connects directly to the transmitter of the Wireless Go. Okay, so... The reason why I'm doing this particular configuration is because once again, you know, if this all sounds okay and whatnot, I think this is a fantastic option for the wireless go. And if indeed, you know, people just like the sound of the RV Ford anyway, you know, get the mic anyways, you know, the, you know, you don't have to make it wireless like I'm doing because the tone will basically sound like this anyway, hardwired. So in this configuration, you might think, yeah, but you know, it look, might look a bit odd or something on the bottom, you know, with the, uh, the wireless ghost transmitter. Well, for me, it doesn't. And the reason for that is, is because usually to take a traditional XLR microphone like this and to make it wireless, you would normally have to use a fairly hefty transmitter block on the bottom. And that being the case, this is a lot lighter and it's not as big or as bulky. It's a different shape, granted, but it definitely won't bulk it up anywhere near the extent of a traditional XLR type transmitter unit. As I'm talking now, I'll just kind of walk around a bit. I'm not too sure if I just mentioned it either in the first take, but because of the fact that the RV4 isn't massively oversensitive at the capsule and whatnot, or at least its output isn't, it actually suits itself really well to the Wireless Go because the Wireless Go can be clipped if you've got a loud voice or a loud source going in and i am that loud source and hopefully what we're hearing here is very little clipping going on and stuff like that which again i think will make this combination really really good now the only thing is it is starting to like really get heavy with the rain now <laughs> i can hear it on the trees and whatnot so i might have to cut this short because i just don't want to water damage my camera but what i'll do i'll walk off a little bit here let's just see what's happening i'm not necessarily going to go for a full-on range test here but it'll be just interesting you know to see or hear what's going on and whatnot so let me come down here now i should still be getting picked up here but i'm going to try going around the tree and whatnot it probably will drop off i don't know but i'll try it anyway so i'll just carry on talking as i'm going around the tree so i'm right behind the tree and whatnot here then i'll come back around as well to the front so hopefully you know Maybe it didn't drop off, I don't know, but that is some substantial distance with some kind of physical impediment in between the transmitter and the receiver. Anyways, I think this will probably sum it up for this particular prelim, because this is really only for me to get a gauge as to whether or not I can actually do a full video, a shorter one, very, you know, very more concise um, to do with this particular setup. That being the case, I will uh, revisit the original ones as well, the, the original prelims for the RV4. Also, I've just ordered another Red 5 uh, microphone as well. So I'll be doing something about that shortly because it looks very interesting. And I've got my eye on another one of their mics as well. So I'll be doing a couple of more tests maybe with some of their stuff. Anyway, so like I say, 35 quid for the mic and whatnot, tenner for the, um, the block. And that block will work with a number of other things, obviously. So what I'll do, even though this is only a prelim, I will actually put uh, some links in the descriptions below as well for these, um, only because I think these still may be of interest, despite the fact this isn't one of my proper finished videos. Anyways, I've got one minute left on the camera. I'm going to have the dart off. So I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.